FW transformation redirects to here. The foldy Waldeisen transform is widely used in high-energy physics. It was historically formulated by Leslie Lawrence Foldy and Siegfried Adolf Waldeisen in 1949 to understand the non-relativistic limit of the Dirac equation. The equation for the spin one-half particles. A detailed general discussion of the foldy waldeisen type transformations in particle interpretation of relativistic wave equations is in of Charya and Sudarshan, a canonical transform. Foldy and Waldeisen made use of a canonical transform that has now come to be known as the foldy waldeisen transformation. A brief account of the history of the transformation is to be found in the obituaries of Foldy and Waldeisen and the biographical memoir of Foldy. Before their work, there was some difficulty in understanding and gathering all the interaction terms of a given order, such as those for a Dirac particle immersed in an external field. With their procedure the physical interpretation of the terms was clear, and it became possible to apply their work in a systematic way to a number of problems that had previously defied solution. The foldy waldeisen transform was extended to the physically important cases of the spin zero and the spin one particles, and even generalized to the case of arbitrary spins. The foldy waldeisen transformation is a unitary transformation on a fermion wave function of the form, where the unitary operator is the 4 times 4 matrix. Above is the unit vector oriented in the direction of the fermion momentum. The above are related to the Dirac matrices by beta equals gamma 0 and alpha i equals gamma 0 gamma i, with i equals 1, 2, 3. A straightforward series expansion applying the commutativity properties of the Dirac matrices demonstrates that above is true. The inverse so it is clear that u minus 1 u equals i, where i is a 4 times 4 identity matrix. Foldy Waldeisen transformation of the Dirac Hamiltonian for a free fermion. This transformation is of particular interest when applied to the free fermion Dirac Hamiltonian operator in bi unitary fashion, in the form. Using the commutativity properties of the Dirac matrices, this can be massaged over into the double angle expression. This factors out into choosing a particular representation. Newton Weiner. Clearly, the FW transformation is a continuous transformation, that is, one may employ any value for theta which one chooses. Now comes the distinct question of choosing a particular value for theta, which amounts to choosing a particular transformed representation. One particularly important representation is that in which the transformed Hamiltonian operator is diagonalized. Clearly, a completely diagonalized representation can be obtained by choosing theta such that the alpha p term in is made to vanish. Such a representation is specified by defining, so that is reduced to the diagonalized in which it is a diagonal matrix. By elementary trigonometry, also implies that, so that using in now let's following reduction to this calculation can be examined in further detail in the following link. Prior to Foldy and Waldeisen publishing their transformation, it was already known that is the Hamiltonian in the newton weiner representation of the Dirac equation. What therefore tells us is that by applying a FW transformation to the dirac Pauli representation of Dirac's equation, and then selecting the continuous transformation parameter theta so as to diagonalize the Hamiltonian, one arrives at the NW representation of Dirac's equation, because NW itself already contains the Hamiltonian specified in. See this link if one considers an on shell mass fermion or otherwise, given by M2 equals P sigma P sigma, and employs a Minkowski metric tensor for which Diag equals. It should be apparent that the expression is equivalent to the EP0 component of the energy momentum vector P mu, so that is alternatively specified rather simply by correspondence between the Dirac Pauli and Newton Weiner representations for a fermion at rest. Now let us consider a fermion at rest. 
test, which we may define in this context as a fermion for which p equals 0. From or, this means that cos equals 1, so that theta equals 0, plus or minus pi plus or minus 2 pi and from, that the unitary operator u equals plus or minus i. Therefore, any operator O in the Dirac Pauli representation upon which we perform a biunitary transformation, will be given, from, at rest, fermion, by, contrasting the original Dirac Pauli Hamiltonian operator with the NW Hamiltonian, we do indeed find the P, equals 0, at rest, correspondence, the velocity operator in the Dirac Pauli representation. Now, let us consider the velocity operator. To obtain this operator, we must commute the Hamiltonian operator with the canonical position operators, i.e., we must calculate. One good way to approach this calculation is to start by writing the scalar rest mass m as, and then to mandate that the scalar rest mass commute with the, thus, we may write where we have made use of the Heisenberg canonical commutation relationship to reduce terms. Then, multiplying from the left by and rearranging terms, we arrive at, because the canonical relationship the above provides the basis for computing an inherent, non-zero acceleration operator, which specifies the oscillatory motion known as Zitterbewegung the velocity operator in the Newton-Weiner representation. In the Newton-Weiner representation, we now wish to calculate. If we use the result at the very end of section 2 above, then this can be written instead as. Using the above, we need simply to calculate, then multiply by i beta. The canonical calculation proceeds similarly to the calculation in section 4 above, but because of the square root expression in, one additional step is required. First, to accommodate the square root, we will wish to require that the scalar square mass m2 commute with the canonical coordinates, xi, which we write as where we again use the Heisenberg canonical relationship. Then, we need an expression for which will satisfy. It is straightforward to verify that. Will satisfy when again employing. Now, we simply return the i beta factor via to arrive at. This is understood to be the velocity operator in the Newton-Weiner representation, because, it is commonly thought that the Zitterbewegung motion arising out of vanishes when a fermion is transformed into the Newton-Weiner representation, the velocity operators for a fermion at rest. Now, let us compare equations and for a fermion at rest, defined earlier in section 3 as a fermion for which p equals 0, here, remains, while becomes. In equation we found that for a fermion at rest, O equals O for any operator. One would expect this to include. However, equations and for A, P equals zero fermion appear to contradict. Similar alternatives, perturbative schemes. Starting with the one particle Dirac equation written earlier with and rewritten here as. Where I equals I4 is the four times four unit matrix. This Hamiltonian is rewritten, namely divided into two parts, where and where alpha 1 137th is the fine structure constant, letting into the zero order equation for and using a particular but known representation of the Dirac operators, yields, where sigma i are the two times two Pauli matrices. Note that the potential V does not appear in the equation above. The equation for the other spin or is where, eliminating gives. This is simply the non-relativistic equation for a system with a renormalized potential and energy eigenvalue. The higher order corrections can be obtained by conventional perturbation theory. This is known as Moore's decoupling technique. Though it resembles the FW transformation, it is computationally and conceptually much simpler, though misunderstood at first in part because the fine structure constant appears in both the equations and the order parameter lambda requiring care in the bookkeeping of the 
perturbative scheme. Moore's decoupling technique was vindicated for the hydrogen atom using conventional Rayleigh-Schrödinger perturbation theory in computer algebra, and proven to converge to the correct solution. It has been applied successfully to relativistic calculations on alkali metals and represents one of many relativistic perturbative schemes, investigated by Werner Kutzelnig. Other applications the powerful machinery of the foldy Waldeisen transform originally developed for the Dirac equation has found applications in many situations such as acoustics and optics. It has found applications in very diverse areas such as atomic systems synchrotron radiation and derivation of the block equation for polarized beams. The applications of the foldy waldeisen and transformation in acoustics is very natural, comprehensive and mathematically rigorous accounts. In the traditional scheme the purpose of expanding the light optics Hamiltonian in a series using as the expansion parameter is to understand the propagation of the quasi-paraxial beam in terms of a series of approximations. Similar is the situation in the case of the charged particle optics. Let us recall that in relativistic quantum mechanics too one has a similar problem of understanding the relativistic wave equations as the non-relativistic approximation plus the relativistic correction terms in the quasi-relativistic regime. For the Dirac equation this is done most conveniently using the foldy waldeisen transformation leading to an iterative diagonalization technique. The main framework of the newly developed formalisms of optics is based on the transformation technique of the foldy waldeisen theory which casts the Dirac equation in a form displaying the different interaction terms between the Dirac particle and an applied electromagnetic field in a non-relativistic and easily interpretable form. In the foldy waldeisen theory the Dirac equation is decoupled through a canonical transformation into two two-component equations. One reduces to the Pauli equation in the non-relativistic limit and the other describes the negative energy states. It is possible to write a Dirac-like matrix representations of Maxwell's equations. In such a matrix form the foldy waldeisen can be applied. There is a close algebraic analogy between the Helmholtz equation and the Klein-Gordon equation, and the matrix form of the Maxwell's equations and the Dirac equation. So, it is natural to use the powerful machinery of standard quantum mechanics in analyzing these systems. The suggestion to employ the foldy waldeisen transformation technique in the case of the Helmholtz equation was mentioned in the literature as a remark. It was only in the recent works that this idea was exploited to analyze the quasi-paraxial approximations for specific beam optical system. The foldy waldeisen technique is ideally suited for the Lie algebraic approach to optics. With all these plus points, the powerful and ambiguity-free expansion, the foldy waldeisen transformation is still little used in optics. The technique of the foldy waldeisen transformation results in what we call as the non-traditional prescriptions of Helmholtz optics and Maxwell optics respectively. The non-traditional approaches give rise to very interesting wavelength-dependent modifications of the paraxial and aberrating behavior. The non-traditional formalism of Maxwell optics provides a unified framework of light beam optics and polarization. The non-traditional prescriptions of light optics are in close analogy with the quantum theory of charged particle beam optics. In optics, it has enabled to see the deeper connections in the wavelength-dependent regime between light optics and charged particle optics.